what's up everyone welcome back to the channel i hope you all are having a very blessed and wonderful day and if not i do pray and hope that it gets better for you so today we are here to talk about some heroes that i personally would like to see appear in suicide squad either as an ally or an enemy and almost everyone here that i'm going to name has either already been confirmed to exist within the arkhamverse or they were simply teased to exist at the very most through things like an easter egg a callback whatever it may have been now the game's main villain which is brainiac brainiac's main goal is to turn earth into the new kolu his home planet and he's using the justice league as his enforcers in order to make sure that everything goes as planned and there's nothing that can get in his way however there are dozens of other heroes in the world that may not have been in metropolis when the invasion started and they might have been elsewhere dealing with god knows what for all we know they could have been dealing with brainiac's invasion in other cities that just so happen to have been targeted as well now my thought process as to why we're only dealing with four league members in general i don't count wonder woman because she's not corrupted although she does make five in total is that the league was just formed shortly prior to this invasion like two to three years tops and the league were the first responders to brainiac stepping foot in metropolis and that's initially how they were taken over because the time gap between suicide squad and arkham knight is only five years and there was no mention of the league or any non-batman citric character until arkham knight unless you count the various easter eggs and call outs that you could find for both black canary and zatanna who seem to have been active in the universe at that time however this being a two to three year uh, theory in the league not being a recent formation wouldn't make sense when you look at how Metropolis not only views Superman but the league as well. The amount of trust, love, and respect that Metropolis has for Superman is outstanding and it seems that all of that transfers over to the league as well because when you look at Metropolis, when you look at the videos, if you just take a second to look at the city and even more so when we get the chance to play it and then we can look around a bit more, there are statues of the league all throughout the city you have certain districts and buildings that you know seem like they're modeled after a certain hero i'm gonna show you this picture this building is specifically modeled after batman and then there's a statue of wonder woman right down the street literally right down the street so clearly the league has been together in around long enough in order to garner an outstanding amount of trust from the city and then we take a look at the hall of justice and we can see that the main team for this universe already have their main statues made as well as certain pieces of their belongings on display like wonder woman's shield here because if you also take another look at all of the footage that we have wonder woman can be seen at times with and without her shield and what I, my my guess is that whenever she goes to meet the squad at the hall of justice this is where she eventually picks her shield back up now the league just being formed would definitely explain why we only have the usual suspects as of current because only certain people were reached out to and they've been operating more as a strike force as opposed to a massive response team like how the justice league normally does heroes like green arrow blue beetle constantine killer frost and more haven't really been picked up yet so there's no reason for them to be there however when earth's greatest heroes fall victim to one unexpected threat new heroes will have to come out of the shadows in order to fill the void that they left behind or you know at the very least try the best they possibly can before they end up getting mind jacked by brainiac and they become his latest victim which brings me to the first hero here on my list black canary now canary has been teased in both arkham city and arkham knight with arkham knight containing a direct confirmation of her existence with oracle asking huntress to stay on the mainland and patrol the evacuee camps from gotham and then telling her to go and find black canary so that canary can help her out with the patrol now canary would definitely make a decent addition because as we know the squad is going up against earth's heaviest hitters and they're going to need all the backup that they can get and wonder woman alone just might not cut it and in terms of a possible boss canary definitely would be sitting in the more grounded area of bosses because besides batman we have an alien a space cop and then a speedster yeah this is a very impossible task to pull off right so i, I don't I honestly don't know how we're gonna get it done we're gonna need all the help that we could possibly get also it definitely would make sense if we could get her character just in game finally if we could get a picture of her maybe make her an npc or just add her in as a full-blown character just something right because technically black canary is the most non-batman centric character reference in the arkham games next to zatanna because again everybody did not start 
popping up until Arkham Knight or everyone else. Now, that actually brings me to my next character, which is Zatanna. So, we got aliens, we got gods, we got space police, we got Batman coming back from the dead, we got talking fish. Why not make this even weirder and throw some magic into the mix, right? Zatanna is a fan favorite character and a powerhouse in her own right um, among the DC fan base. Now, with the departure from the previous Arkham games, we are leaving the somewhat grounded status of the DC universe that we're used to dealing with whenever we follow Batman, and we're stepping into a much larger playing field where the pieces get even more complicated than before. Again, gods, aliens, talking fish, Rocksteady is showing us that they're willing to experiment and mess around with new things and new themes. So why not add in a little magic just to cause a bit more chaos, just cause. Next up, we have Green Arrow, one of my favorite DC heroes. Now, there is no reason why Batman has to be the only billionaire with fancy toys running around the metropolis. Let my boy Green Arrow get some love, Rocksteady. I can already see the comedic scenes playing out where him and Deadshot are going back and forth about who's the better marksman, and God forbid they make him a boss fight. Because people forget, people genuinely forget, Green Arrow got some legitimate hands. He does, he really does. He's also just as accurate as Deadshot and Moomerang, if not better than them. I, really, I'm being nice. He is, that he is definitely better than them. I'm just being nice because I like Deadshot and Boomerang. And then when it comes to King Shark, King Shark honestly won't be an issue for Green Arrow because time and time again, Arrow has shown that as long as he has his brain and his bow, he can do damn near anything and the only way to stop him is to kill him now queen industries has a building back in founders island over in arkham knight if you've played the game and you've been there you more than likely would have seen it because it's one of the biggest buildings there one of the joker infected uh christina bell that you had to fight at panessa studios she worked on the board for the gotham district of queen industries and dialogue could also be heard by the thugs talking about how there are others like batman in different cities and star city is one of the main places Another easy character I can bring up is Martian Manhunter. Now, the last time we actually saw or came across him was back in Arkham Knight, where he was actually working for the GTPD, and his name could be seen on the shift board next to Harvey Bullock and Renee Montoya. Now, Manhunter is a very dangerous piece to add to the board because, as an ally, this means everything. Because Martians can actually match up with Plutonians in terms of strength, and if you don't believe me, you can look that fact up, which means that you now have a better answer for dealing with Superman and the other corrupted heroes in general. However, Superman clearly was the biggest threat on the board. However, Manhunter could easily become the biggest threat behind Superman because of a variety of things. Super speed, durability, phasing, invisibility, regeneration, mind control. At this point, I would assume that you have a fair understanding after just some of the powers of his that I named. You 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 kind of understand just how screwed how screwed the squad would be fighting this man alone. But that's the whole point of this game. Doing something you don't want to do which is trying to kill the unkillable. Now moving on to the final hero, right? It would make the most sense if we saw him travel to Metropolis because the entire planet is at stake and 70% of the planet is technically his kingdom. And a Justice League protected Brainiac isn't good for anybody. Aquaman, the one and only true king of the seas. See now, I'm genuinely torn on how I wanted him introduced because he could show up all cool and be like a big help or hindrance because he's thinking about not only his people but also the people of Earth and he doesn't want either of them to, you know, just get, uh, well, murdered. So he decides to go with Brainiac, or he, you know, uh, pulls up to help but then ends up getting mind jacked by Brainiac the moment he gets there and now we gotta fight a walking fish deck. Look, 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 no disrespect to Aquaman. I like Aquaman. I know over the past decade, his public image has definitely gotten better because he used to be the butt of every single joke, but Rocksteady does have the opportunity to do the funniest thing ever. You can appease the people that want Aquaman in the game, but at the same time, you could also toss in one great solid Joker running gag so that you won't piss off the Aquaman fans too badly. But you can also acknowledge the weird and messed up history that that character has had in his publication. Now Aquaman's teaser comes from Arkham Knight where both him and Ocean Master has easter eggs that you could find throughout the city. 
well let me not say throughout aquaman you can only find in one specific spot and i believe ocean master was tied to a restaurant that may or may not have had multiple locations in arkham right i can't fully remember but i do know that you can find them there now my dark horse pick as doc because we are getting post launch content with new story would be boost to gold and this is simply just because he already like we have confirmation that he exists within this universe like we literally have like a solid picture slash poster of him and everything and i'm pretty sure that a lot of people are going to be asking for boost to go just give us boost to go in a dlc he can have a minor role just tossing him in here i'm pretty sure would mean the world to a lot of people just just give us something just give us something that's not a poster but with that being said that's going to bring us to the end of the video so let me know down in the comments below who would you guys like to see show up in suicide squad either as a hero or a villain and why do you want to see them here and if you've enjoyed the video and you wouldn't mind continuing to help support not only me but the channel as well please feel free to smack that like share and subscribe button and hit that notifications bell so that you won't ever miss out on any of my suicide squad related content and i will catch y'all in the moonlight peace